Hi, Alvin Doyon here, and you are watching episode 71 of the 3 Minute Health Tip. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about the epileptoid crisis or the epi crisis. Now, if you've been following the last few episodes, we've been really breaking down the different components of the biological program. Uh, we know that it, it initiates from an unexpected conflict shock that we experience subconsciously and subjectively, and it affects the entire organism, the psyche, the brain, and the organ. You know, once we have these unexpected conflicts, uh, we enter the two phases of the biological program, the first phase being the conflict active phase, and then when the conflict gets resolved, either naturally or we consciously resolve it, we now enter the phase uh, A of healing. And we talked about that in the last episode, how during the phase A of healing, fluid goes to the area that's healing, the organ that's healing, but fluid will also go to the part of the brain that had the original impact. And so in this episode, we're gonna talk about um, another component of the healing phase known as the epicrisis or the epileptoid crisis. Now, the epicrisis is very significant because it's really a counter-regulatory mechanism in order to expel and get rid of that excess fluid buildup in the organ and in the part of the brain. By eliminating this excess fluid through an epicrisis, uh, what it does is it relieves the pressure in the brain. And so, an epicrisis temporarily puts us back into conflict activity, it puts us back into a stress state. So we start to experience an epicrisis as restlessness uh, with symptoms such as high blood pressure, maybe high heart rate or fast heart rate, maybe some nausea, some cold shivers. And the extent of the symptoms during the epicrisis can really vary from very mild symptoms like a nosebleed, like a coughing attack, uh, or uh, maybe a mild fainting to more severe symptoms such as strokes, heart attacks, seizures. And again, the extent of the severity of the epicrisis is going to be dictated by the magnitude of the shock for that person subjectively and the intensity of the conflict active phase for that individual person. And it's important to know this because when we go through an epicrisis, we want to try to stay uh, calm because we understand that we're going through the epicrisis. And this is one of the things that's important uh, with understanding GNM, the five biological laws and these biological programs is that we can tend to anticipate what's going to happen when, once we know that we are in a healing phase, probably a phase of healing because something's been resolved. And then we watch for the epicrisis because this epicrisis tends to happen late at night when we're relaxed, on vacation, when something's been handled or settled, when we feel like we can finally relax about something. Uh, and so this is often when we have these symptoms, when we get the cold shivers or the shakes, or when we really have these asthma attacks or, or coughing attacks or nosebleeds. So recognizing that when you wake up with that excruciating symptom or, or feeling at two in the morning that you're having an epicrisis, maybe you continue to put the ice pack in the head, can go a long way into not allowing you to, to panic about that symptom because of what you know. And so I encourage those of you that have been learning this right now and following me to continue to expand your knowledge of the epicrisis and all of these other components of the biological program by visiting the learninggnm.com website. I want to thank you as always for your attention and I'll see you at the next episode.